Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike, but that's not why I'm here today. This is another Saving Sandy episode, this time looking at transitioning from a Windows computer to a Mac computer. I recently did that and I'd like to kind of share some of my thoughts with you, which you might find helpful. Now I've had Microsoft-based computers for well over 20 years, from MS-DOS now up to Windows 7. And so I'm very familiar with using them and fixing them and, and problem solving. But frankly, as I've gotten older, I've just gotten tired of always having to fix some problem that resulted from installing a piece of software, some software update, or sometimes for no reason that I'm aware of at all. And so a few years ago, I looked at Linux as a possible switch, but Linux just did not have the breadth of software that I needed. And so now I've made the switch to a Mac, at least with, for my main computer, purchasing a Mac Pro a couple of weeks ago. And so this review is based on that particular Mac Pro and my experience with it. What I'm going to do is look at the various points and counterpoints between the two computers, and I'll offer you my opinion. So having a Mac, will that allow me to have a Windows-free world? Probably not. My kids and my wife have Windows-based computers. At work, I have a Windows-based computer. And even my netbook is a Windows-based computer. So really, having a Mac sort of complicates things. It doesn't make things any simpler. What about hardware? Well, with Windows, there are dozens of choices, dozens of components, manufacturers, hundreds of models. With Mac, it's a little bit different. Mac is made by Apple. Apple controls all the product line. There's a handful of products with a handful of options. So selection, although limited, can be a little bit easier. In addition, a lot of detail has gone into the design of not only the outside of the Macs, but also the inside. So for instance, the Mac Pro that I have, um, looking on the inside, I've never seen such well put together components. There really are virtually no hanging wires or anything. It's just really quite beautiful. So you have a, a kind of a sleeker design with less choice and probably better quality components, which leads to likely better longevity. One of the guys down the hall from my office uses an old egg-shaped Mac. It's an iMac probably from at least 10 years ago. And he's still perfectly happy to do his word processing on it, and it works perfectly well. Well, what about other peripheral hardware? Well, with the Mac, most peripheral hardware that you currently have will work. My printer works, my router works, uh, my mouse and things will work too. But some things won't. So, for instance, this webcam that I'm recording this on right now, will be it's recognized by the Mac, but I can't use the Windows software with it, which kind of hampers, hampers the use. So there is a little bit of an iffiness there. But overall, the hardware itself is not compelling enough for me to move towards the Mac. Well, what about the built-in software? Windows comes with a lot of software, but we typically call that bloatware because it's usually crippled software or trialware. And you can download some OK software off the Microsoft website, but you have to find the site, download it, install it, and when you're le left with the programs, although they are improving, they're still pretty very basic programs, and likely if you do anything more than very basic work with them, like a photo editor for instance, you're going to want to upgrade to a commercial product. With the Mac, it's a little bit different. They really do load some really good software directly on the computer. So the iLife series gives you a photo editor, a movie editor, a web design program, a sound editor, even a DVD maker. Um, and there's other program too, like a really good backup program and a program that allows you to boot up your Mac computer as a Windows computer. Uh, you have to supply your own Windows software, like your own Windows operating system disk, which you can buy but you can operate it in both ways. And so, so you really get a lot of really good software with the Mac and a lot of good video tutorials, which makes it really very easy to use that software. Software is great, um, but I would say built-in software is not a compelling enough reason for me to buy a Mac. Well, how about games? Well, let's face it, if you are a game player, Windows is the place to be. There's just more games, so I, I don't play games. So either way, that's not a compelling reason for me to buy a Mac. What about purchase software? Well, with Windows, you have probably thousands of titles of software, much less with the Mac, but you can find just about anything that you need uh, for a Mac right now. In fact, some programs that are exclusive to Mac, like Final Cut, are really considered absolutely top-notch programs. You can also find a lot of programs that cross the line, like uh, you can get, for instance, Microsoft Office for the Mac, or 
QuickBooks for the Mac or Photoshop for the Mac and, and many others. But the one thing that you do need to be aware of is that there is some Windows software that there is not a Mac equivalent. So one of my favorite, favorite video editors, in fact, my favorite video editor, uh, editor is a program called Sony Vegas. Vegas is Windows exclusive. And so if I'm going to want to run it on my Mac, I'm going to have to run it on a Windows version. In other words, boot up my Mac as a Windows machine and run it that way. So that's something to be aware of. But a lot of good software exists for the Mac, but that's not enough to get me to buy a Mac. What about the fact that Macs are easy? In other words, the operating system is easy. Well, let's be honest here. Operating systems are incredibly complex pieces of software that have to interact with the internet and software and memory and video and everything else. And so none of them are easy. I will say though, however, that the Mac OS is easier. There's a lot of just simple things that Mac does to make their software easier. So you, to open a program, you click it once, not twice. Or if you have to terminate a program, and yes, programs do crash on the Mac, it's a simple item in the menu, not control, alt, delete, and then going through all those steps that you have to go through in Windows. Also, Mac assumes a lot of things. So for instance, when you're setting up uh, your software for the first time, many of the options are just very simply done because Mac is making the assumptions in the background. This is typically great. On occasion, however, Mac makes a decision that maybe you don't agree with, and to change those decisions may actually be a little harder on a Mac because you have to dig a little deeper into the software to alter. But for most people, I think they're going to prefer this system, and overall, even though I'm very, very familiar with Windows, I would say that, that for me, it is actually a little bit easier to use a Mac. But that's not enough for me to change to a Mac. What about malware? Well, Windows is the number one operating system with uh, over 90% penetration. So you write your spyware and your viruses for Windows mostly, not completely, but mostly. And so that means that you're constantly having to deal with all that and you're constantly having to deal with all those updates that Windows sends you to protect you against all that and updating your viral programs and everything. And that's just much, much, much less of an issue with the Mac. So you don't have all those headaches and that's definitely a pretty compelling reason for me, but it's not compelling enough. How about stability? Well, you know, Windows crashes all the time. I've left this Mac Pro on now for a couple of weeks, never turned it off. It's running just as smoothly as the day that I turned it on. It's not running slower, it's not hanging up. I've had a program crash on it. I easily terminated that program. While the program was crashed, I was able to run other programs and I didn't have to reboot the whole operating system after it crashed. It was really kind of wonderful. In fact, the stability of the operating system is so wonderful that I'm almost afraid that I'm going to turn it on one day and it's not going to be there. I almost have what I would say is PTWD, Post Traumatic Windows Disorder. I'm so used to having the computer crash that I'm afraid that this one will crash too, but so far it's been great. And that sort of makes sense because Apple controls the hardware, they control the operating system, and they control most of the software. They're not being interfered so much by viruses and malware. So of course it's going to run better. So I have empathy for Windows, but I still want my computer to run. So is that enough of a reason for me to switch to a Mac? You better believe it.